Well, hello, my YouTube fellows and gals. So today's books of the day for sale are from my educational section. And these will be 10 books for $2. And also, you can get a hold of me through Mendes Bookstore or more on Facebook or send a email to me, Tammy's Makeup Trees at gmail.com. And you can let me know what lot you're interested in or the name and the author of books. So anyways, the very first book of this selection is called Color in Your World by Farber Byron. I think it's how you say his name. This is a 1962 copyright. This is what it looks like, and this is what it's about. Color in the Real You. If you dislike black, you probably are a fatalist who abhors fate. There is no doubt that intellectual and idealists are especially attracted by yellow. It is in woman that bright green finds its real glory for the significant feature of the color is a token of what the psychoanalyst terms narcissism or self-love. People who have surmounted poverty or cruelty as children may take the color pink unto themselves. If you like green and dislike red, you have a natural interest in life, but feel you are you're pushed around more than you you would like. <laughs> Color expert Farber Byron can tell you quite a few things about yourself you probably don't even know by analyzing the colors you like and don't like. In Color Your World, he sets forth his theories of interrelation of color preference and personality and proves some fascinating points about color in the human psyche. Mr. Byron has served as color consultant to the U.S. government and the armed forces and to education, industry, and commerce. His safety color code pioneered during World War II in Army and Navy installations and in war plans has since been adopted almost universally. His research on the moral building factors and psychological stabilizing influences of certain colors and color combination has revolutionized the institutional approach to color decoration. Mr. Byron's books include Color, Form, and Space, Creative Color, and Color Psychology and Color Therapy. So there you go. There is book number one. It's very interesting. Book number two. This is The Mind of Adolf Hitler. And this is a 1972 copyright by Walter C. Langer. And this says... Probably the best attempt ever undertaken to find out why the evil genius of the Third Reich acted the way he did. Here is the top secret psychological analysis of Hitler just released after 29 years under wraps. It definitely fits together the facts and fantasies of Hitler's life. His dual personality, his death fears, his sexual perversions, his hatreds of Jews, his suicide. The Mind of Adolf Hitler is more than just a gripping biography. It is a masterpiece of psycho, psycho, psychological historical reconstruction charged with brilliant insights to the strange dynamics behind the most perplexing enigma of our century. So there you go. In the Mind of Adolf Hitler. Not sure I'd want to go there, but oh well. <laughs> it's a book that came into my store for some reason. Okay, book number three. The Pentagon Propaganda Machine by Senator William Fulbright. This is a 1971 copyright, and this is what the book is about. This is a nice mixture, though. Senator J.W. Fulbright is uniquely qualified to rate this book time after time as chairman of Foreign Relations Committee. He has confronted the well-staffed, well-oiled, profusely financed Pentagon Propaganda Machine, Recently, he has tried to counter the most high-powered publicity campaigns that the Pentagon has ever waged. Those for the anaballistic missile system in the Vietnam War, now Fulbright tells the inside story of how military public relations apparatus works. This is a thought-provoking book. It is an account of the military spending more and more of the taxpayers' money to propagand propagandize in favor of spending even more and more of the taxpayers' money on such dangerous policies as ABM in Vietnam it is essential and fascinating book of those who would know, know the truth. So there you go. That is book number three. Book number four. 
This is called The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. It is a 1952 copyright. It's got some aging in it. That's what the book looks like. And this is what it's about. This famous book will show you how faith in yourself makes good things happen to you. How to break your, the worry habit. How to get other people to like you. How to energize your life to give yourself the vitality and initiative needed to carry out your ambitions and hopes, how to avoid the jitters in your daily work, how to believe in yourself and everything you do, how to live in a controlled, relaxed life, no matter how fast the pace is, how to build new power and determination through a simple formula that really works, how to develop the power to reach your goals, how to think the kind of thoughts that lead you to a fuller and satisfying success. So there is book number four. Book number five. The Women at the Well by Dale Evan Rogers. This is a 1972 copyright. This is what it looks like. Put some pictures in it too. And this is what it says. Dale Evans Rogers is one of the great women of our time. She has received numerous awards and honors, including Church Woman of the Year by Religious Heritage and California's Mother of the Year. She's a supporter of many benevolent groups, including Exceptional Children's Foundation, National Association for Retarded Children, and World Vision Incorporated, one of Hollywood's outstanding Christian personalities. Dale Evan Rogers is well known as the entertainer and television star. Her home, her personal life, and her many books attest to her strong faith and trust in God. The wife of the movie and television cowboy star Roy Rogers, Dale Evan Rogers has written 10 inspiring books about the wonders that faith can bring. So there is book number five. Book number six. This one here is the Bermuda Triangle by Charles Berlitz. It is a 1975. It looks like it's got a little tear right there that I didn't notice before outline in a ship. I don't know if it was cut that way or what. This is what it looks like. And it's got pictures in it too. And some writing in the back right there. And then of course my post-it notes. And this is what it says about this book. Let me see here. I don't think there's a symbol. Let's see. Okay. There are happening... Things are happening in Bermuda Triangle, even as you're reading the words. For over five years, Charles Berlitz has been observing and making startling discoveries about this con controversial region. And here at last, he reveals the results of his research. The most incredible saga of unexplained disappearances ever written. And the contents, because it doesn't really have a synopsis with this book, it just speaks for itself about what it's about, is the contents are, one, the Bermuda Triangle, the mystery of the air and sea, two, the triangle of disappearing planes, three, the sea of lost ships, four, some who escaped, five, is there a logical explanation, six, time, space, warps, and other worlds, seven, is suggestion from the ocean's past, eight, the surprises of prehistory, and nine, the watchers, protectors, readers, or indifferent observers. And there's acknowledgement, acknowledgements of a bibliogra bibliography in the back of it. So there you go. The Bermuda Triangle. I always thought that was fascinating when I was growing up. So that's book number six. This is book number seven. We have Russia and the Western... No. Russia and the West under Lenin and Stalin by George F. Keenan. This is a 1961 copyright. And this is what it's about. No other book will give you a clear and understanding of Russian behavior, past, present, present, and future, as this fascinating volume by the man who probably knows more about the Russians than any other American. Ambassador Keenan's historic perspective of the Soviet Union relations is full and authentic. It covers this period from Bolshevik uprising to the Cold War. It deals with such figures of destiny as Wilson, Lenin, Curzon, Stalin, Molotov, Hitler, and Roosevelt. So there you go. Book number seven. Book number eight 
is Lyndon B. Johnson by Harry Province. This is a 1965 copyright. It's got some writing in it. That's what the book looks like. And this is what it's about. It tells the story behind the man and how he, he got... Not merely the way he is, but where he is today. It has a firm, resounding ring of truth throughout his pages. An illuminating book that interprets the president as a complex human being. Few others than Mr. Province have known Mr. Johnson as well and as long. Harry Province, he was a Texas newspaper, newspaper editor. Has personally known Lyndon Johnson since he was first elected to Congress more than 30 years ago. From his close association and long-term observation, he succeeded in creating a vivid picture of Lyndon B. Johnson, the politician, and the man. So that's what this is about. And this is a book number eight. Book number nine. We have Stonewall Jackson by George F.R. Henderson, and this is actually a 1962 copyright. This is what the book looks like. And this is what it's about. Stonewall Jackson, the embattled hero of the Confederacy who rose from obscurity to become one of the great captains is one of the most fascinating and enigmatic features in modern military history a soldier of simple taste and stern piety is also a man of complex inner passions he loved power his ambitions were fierce his standards heroic he saw into the heart of things both human and divine more deeply than most men even the most reckless irreligious soldiers were silent in his presence awestruck and abashed before this great god-fearing man in this superbly documented account of his life and campaigns, the personality, the courage, the genius, the magnetic being that was Jackson emerged with thrilling intensity. Sounds like a good one. So there's number nine. And then we have book number 10. And this one is called The Story of the Second World War by Catherine Savage. It is a 1958 book. And this is what it looks like. It's got a little bit of a stainage right there on the outside. And this is what it is about. Blazing panorama, pan, panorama, panorama of seven cruel fighting years the world can never forget. I never read these ahead of time, so this is what I mess up too. <laughs> I don't practice. L. Alamine Normandy, two jib of battles raging the fiery skies on every sea across every land. Great leaders who planned the victory, heroic men and, men and women who fought and died for it. This is from Scholastic Book Service. So that's interesting. The story of the Second World War. So there you go. And my educational, like I said, they're all mixed up. Because I have self-help books and things like that all in the same category to me if you can learn from it it's educational so there you go book number 10 and i hope whatever time zone you're in you are having a great time and with that i will see you soon bye Mwah.